Wolf, sit back. Relax. You're watching Timberwolf Tracks. I'm Brooklyn. And I am Matt. And man, this year's been pretty eventful so far, hasn't it? Yeah, those fire alarms have definitely been something. Indeed they have been. You know what else has been pretty eventful? Pajama day? No. <laughs> Close. I mean, Spirit Week was pretty eventful. Yeah? Didn't you, Kate and Aurora, interview some people about it? Spirit Week, we asked some newcomers of Crosstown Clash about their experience so far. Um, my name is Kennedy Carlson and I am a freshman. My name is Brayden, I'm a ninth grader. My name is Lily Geist and I'm a sophomore. My name is Avery and I'm a freshman. Kennedy and I'm in ninth grade. Reese Overland and I'm in ninth grade. My name is Hayden Barrowman and I'm a freshman. Emma Abbott in tenth grade. I'm Langley Davis and I'm a sophomore. I'm Izzy Fletcher and I'm in ninth grade. My name is Sierra Hill and I am a sophomore. My name is Ellis Holly and I'm in ninth grade. Maureen and I'm in ninth grade. I'm very excited. I am really excited because this is the most hyped up game of the year. Super excited. I'm really excited for the game. Probably just seeing everyone dress up and get excited for it. Probably seeing everyone's school spirit and like all the outfits have been really cute. Seeing how other people dress up and seeing what clever ideas they have. Seeing everybody like dress up and like the school spirit. I'm excited to see the student section go crazy. I'm excited to cheer my first game. I'll be in the band doing color guard, and I'm looking forward to all the chants there. I'm so excited to go cheer on the Sea Wolves. <laughs> Just like being there like as a student for the first time. I am really looking forward to performing in the band as I'm in color guard. The game and like the student section. Getting to do all the chants and having fun in the student section. Hanging out with my friends and watching the game and doing all the chants. Hopefully North beating high. Student section for sure. The student section. I'm looking forward to beating Norman High. Go T Wolves! Go T Wolves! Their enthusiasm was contagious. You know what else is contagious? The flu? No, the atmosphere of the football games this year. <laughs> oh yeah, Carter and Emma made a piece that captures the success of their season so far. This week, we had a chance to catch up with quarterback Gavin Frakes to see how the season is going. Um, the Probably the win versus Norman High. Probably both wins. You know, we got two wins, so that's really nice. And... Probably the first touchdown feeling versus Norman High was really nice. That was definitely, and everybody was, the crowd was going crazy. So that was definitely fun. We need to limit penalties. We've had like 15 plus penalties in both games and we are just shooting ourselves in the foot. So that's something we've been working on and focusing on. So we need to clean those up. Uh, I mean, we won and we won by a good margin. So yeah, it definitely went how we wanted it to, you know. It could have been, it, we could have won by more, but I mean, you know, you take wins as you get them. Sure. I think it's going to be a really good rest of the season. I think we're going to make the playoffs and then hopefully we can make a run from there. We also got the chance to sit down with Coach Jones to get his input on the season. Well, I think for me, you know, just seeing the way that we've played, um, obviously to be 2-0 and is a highlight, but uh, kind of the way that we've got both victories and then um, the way that we've played offense, I've been really um, happy with and, and I think our quarterback play has been outstanding and then we've, we've really had some outstanding uh, explosive offensive plays and so to see that has been great and then defensively to see our guys uh, come along and get some big time stops uh, you know we're just playing explosive football on both sides of the ball. Well I think for us it's uh, just penalties we, we've had a ton of, of personal foul penalties and unsportsmanlike conduct and you know, we want to be aggressive, but we want to be within in control of ourselves. And so that's something that we've stressed with our team uh, to make sure that we clean up. Uh, you know, 
Crosstowns, you, you just never know what's going to happen. So at the end of the day, you just want to win it. Um, but, you know, to win it and, uh, you know, to put 40 points on them is obviously fun for us. And, uh, you know, to win our second one in a row, um, have it beat them out in the playoffs last year, I think, uh, you know, it's just it's nice to, you know, it always achieves our number one goal, and that's to be the best team in Norman. And so uh, really happy with that, proud of our kids for achieving that in a dominating fashion. Well, you know, a lot of it's going to depend on uh, we can be as good as we want to be. And so I think for us, um, you know, our guys that aren't necessarily starters right now have to continue to prep because we've got to navigate injuries and a lot of other things as you go through the journey of a football season. And so I think, um, you know, we're going to be as good as we want to be and we can, we can be as good as, as, as anybody in the state. Uh, but we got to continue to take our preparation seriously and we got to make sure that, um, you know, our reserves are ready to go and step in into a starting role at any given time. Uh, you know, I've been at several different places and uh, it's pretty cool to see the change in our student body to, to you know, even not a football instance, but I remember we're practicing a football game uh, or we're practicing uh, for a game and I hear our student body roaring at the softball game and our guys got energy and then to go out in the crosstown and to see our student body do the things that they did um, whether they know it or not it means a lot to the student athletes and, and it's really cool to see that culture flip uh, and to see our student body really engage and pull for each other. For Timberwolf Tracks I'm Carter Higgins and I'm Emma Berglund. On the topic of sports, Lynn Senior War made peace over the volleyball team this year. Hey Two Wolves, it's that time again. Volleyball season is here. Let's take a look at this year's team and the new head coach. We sat down with Coach Avalos to discuss the new season. So far I'm feeling really well, really good about the season. Um, it's a lot of fun with this group. Um, I feel like we're still getting to know each other and kind of understand the expectations that I have and then uh, the expectations that the girls have because they have high goals for themselves. So it's been a lot of fun, a lot of figuring each other out and then just persevering through change. The whole reason I wanted to switch was to be able to work with more students on a broader basis. And then um, having that opportunity is a lot of fun. It also creates different challenges that I'm excited for and then just learning how to tackle a little bit better every day. I chose North because of the great reputation. I actually knew the program um, from a distance through recruiting and remember watching their team being like, oh, that'd be fun to coach. Like they look like a gr good group of girls and they are. And um, I personally was looking just to kind of lay some roots and fell in love with Oklahoma City, which is hilarious because I'm from Texas and my whole life I said I'd never moved to Oklahoma and here I am and I'm loving it. So. I hope to leave the team state, whether it's this year, next year, whatever year, it's going to take some time to develop um, the culture that I want, but I just want to lead these girls to be the best students, players, people that they can be once they leave this program. So hopefully when they leave this program, they have fond memories of just great opportunities with teammates, great opportunities um, to compete at the highest level, and then hopefully moving on to whatever they want to do next. I am a setter and I like being a setter because it's like a leadership role and I get to make a lot of decisions. My favorite part about being on the team is just the chemistry that we have and the connection that we build all together. My favorite drill would have to be dig or die just because it gets everyone moving and it helps us work on effort and not letting balls touch the floor. Um, I'm an outside hitter. I like it because you kind of get to do a little bit of everything, defense, service, blocking, hitting, and you're an outlet, so get a lot of touches, get to swing in a lot of balls. I like the new coach's positivity and her encouragement and the way she motivates us. Her personality, 100%. She's like goofy, but when times are needed for her to like get mad at us, I guess, uh, she, it kicks in, so it's, it's good. Um, I love that she doesn't take anything, like, harshly. Like, she looks at the good in everything, and I just, it's so nice. I like how positive she is. 
she always can find the good things in bad situations, which is nice, because our team is pretty good at being down on ourselves, so a good little equalizer for that. Man, I love questions. Which animal has survived the longest in space? Why are you asking me this? <laughs> well, it's the question of the week. Harrison, Kellen, and Daniel are in charge of it. Hi, my name's Kellen. And I'm Harrison. And today we are answering the question of the week. The question of the week is, what animal would survive the longest in space? It's funny you ask. I think this is the animal that's going to survive in space, also known as a water bear. I think a platypus would survive in space because Perry the platypus has been there and done that and he's a spy, so I think he sets a good tone for the rest of the platypuses. A whale would survive in outer space because they could swim through. A ferret would survive in space because they're really aggressive and they bit me one time. I believe that a lizard would survive in space because I don't, I don't think I've ever seen one die like in space. I think a seahorse so they can swim around in the galaxy. My name is Lily. I'm in 12th grade. I think the animal that would survive in space is maybe a polar bear because it's good and cold. Hello, my name is Cameron. I'm in 10th grade and the animal I think would survive in space the longest is an elephant. One, because they're smart and two, because they're big animals and they have a, a big lung capacity. Uh, the animal I think that would survive the longest in space is definitely my mom. You know, she's a beast. I've seen her do some crazy things like, I don't know, man, I think she could probably withstand anything, like especially space. Uh, she doesn't need to breathe, honestly. Brooklyn, I have a question for you. What's up? What kind of food you, would you eat for the rest of your life? Is this another question of the week segment? Yes, but this time it's from Jared, Alex, and Landon. All right, please introduce yourself. I am Kate. All right, what's one food that you could eat for the rest of your life? Mm, probably mac and cheese. All right, and why? Um, because it's awesome. All right, introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Jackson. All right, what's the food you would eat for the rest of your life? Uh, I could definitely eat steak for the rest of my life. And why is that? It's gas. Oh. All right, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Ava. All right, Ava, what's the food you would eat for the rest of your life? Um, definitely biscuits and gravy. And why is that? Because it's awesome. All right, can you introduce yourself? I'm Lauren. All right, Lauren, what's the food you would eat for the rest of your life? Uh, chicken Alfredo. Why would you eat chicken Alfredo for the rest of your life? Um, it's really good. All right, what are you guys' names? Kendra, London. All right, if you could eat one meal for the rest of your life, what would it be? Protein balls and sweet potatoes. <laughs> um, strawberries and pickles. All right, why? Um, because they're sweet, but they're not bad for you. Um, I'm just addicted to them. I don't know. All right, introduce yourself. I'm Sam Millar. I'm a sophomore. What's one food you would eat for the rest of your life? Subway sandwiches. Eat fresh. Any good reason for that? I just feel like it's the one thing you could probably eat for the rest of your life without getting tired of it, you know? You could switch up the ingredients. Eat fresh. Can you introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Tuka Malabadi, and I'm a junior. Um, if there was one food that you would eat for the rest of your life, what would it be? Probably bagels, because you can change it up so you won't get like all sweet foods or all savory foods, and it's a nice balance. Okay. Can you introduce yourself? I'm Jennifer, and I'm a senior. Okay, if there was one food that you would eat for the rest of your life, what would it be? Chick-fil-A. Why Chick-fil-A? Because you can never go wrong with that. Say, hey, did you hear about this user's new principal? Yeah, I wonder how she's doing so far. Well, Jack actually went out and interviewed her for a piece, so I guess we're about to find out. Hello. My name is Dr. Kim Garrett. I'm the new principal here at North. And um, I think today the goal is just to give you a little bit of information about myself. 
Um, so this, as you know, for those of you who have been here in the past, um, this is my first year here at North. I started in July. Um, I've been in Broken Arrow for four years. I worked there as the director of academics. So that means I worked with the high school in Broken Arrow. I was not the building principal, um, but got to work with the principal and teachers. And then my last year there, I actually got to um, run a really cool program for high school students who wanted to graduate from high school at the same time also graduate from college with a two-year college degree. And so I worked with those students over at the Northeastern State University campus in Broken Arrow. And um, basically those kids did two years of high school and then went right into college. So that was a lot of fun. And it really just um, reminded me how much fun that I had had as a building principal in the past. Um, so when this position came open, I was just really excited um, to be chosen for this opportunity. I've been a building principal in the past for both high school and junior high. I spent four years at Broken Arrow High School. Um, we were a high school when I started, we had 3,300 kids, and by the time I left, we had 3,800 kids. So very large high school, largest one in um, Arkansas at that time. And I've also been a junior high principal, um, grades seven and eight. Um, had a lot of fun um, there at the junior high level. But I think my favorite level is definitely high school. Um, I like high school because I like the concept um, that we are, we're your last stop before the rest of your life. Um, it's up to us in the high school to make sure you're ready. Um, some of you are going to go on to college or a university. Some of you may continue your education at a technical school. Um, some of you may take a break. You may go directly to work. Um, just lots of different opportunities. I've always felt like my goal um, working with high school students is to make sure that you have choices, that you, are, you do not leave high school locked into one choice because you didn't walk away from high school with the skills that you need to be successful. So um, my, my role is about choices. Um, some of my goals this year, I want, first of all, because of um, what I just talked about, I want you to be successful academically. I want you to leave high school feeling like you received a high quality education. And I know from already working with the teachers here, that's exactly what um, the teachers here prepare you for, um, is for whatever the next step is. But you know what, it's also high school. I want you to have fun. Um, I want you to be able to make memories here. One of the things I've had lots of different people talk to me about is just really increasing the school spirit. You know, I was just really, I have to say I was really surprised when different people came and talked to me when I first started and said um, that here at North, um, some, some people don't feel like we have enough school spirit. And of all the places not to have school spirit, why North? I mean, this is an incredible high school. Um, we should have the most school spirit um, anywhere in any high school. So um, I love what's going on right now. Um, I loved seeing all the students at the volleyball game, um, all the students at the softball game last night. That was terrific. Um, and I want us to continue to grow those experiences, to make them fun, to make them meaningful so that um, when you look back years from now, you, you have many memories to talk about with your kids and, and just a really enjoyable experience of attending North. Aren't clubs just great? Yeah, they're pretty neat. Did you hear about Project Linus? Yeah, actually, Olivia and KK did a piece on it. ton of different ways to get involved at Norman North. Our club fair was on September 8th. We had over 20 clubs and organizations come be a part of our club fair here at Norman North. We sat down with the president of Project Linus to see what her club was about. My name is Meg Kimmett and I'm the president of Club Project Linus. Project Linus is a national organization and we make baby blankets and then donate them to children's hospitals, women's shelters, and other families in need. My favorite memory from Project Linus is this summer we partnered with McFarland United Methodist Church 
uh, to do a VBS night for preschool to fifth grade where they actually got to tie their own blankets and it was a lot of fun. The club fair really benefited Project Linus. We got to talk to many ages of students and we got a little over 100 members to sign up for Club Project Linus this year. My hope for this year actually is that we make as many blankets as we have made the past three years because we have so many more members. Um, last year the most amount of people that ever came to a meeting was probably about eight. This year we have 185 members, 60 showed up to the meeting and a lot more are committed to coming to Blanket Day. So I'm hoping that we make at least 100 blankets throughout this year. So students can get involved by following our Instagram, which is just project.linus.nnhs. On there, there's a remind that they can join. All messages go out through, go out through that. Um, it's super low time commitment, so we really encourage everyone to join. Wasn't it so fun to hear about Project Linus? Yeah, it was. For more information about Project Linus and other clubs, go to the Norman North website under the Activities tab. That's all for this week's episode. Make sure to tune in next time, same Timberwolf time. Same Timberwolf place. Dark in the city and the night is a wire. Stream in the subway and the earth is on fire. Oh yeah. Woman, you want me, so give me a sign. I threw my eat them just a moment. Dream high. And it's too close to hide I'll be upon you on the moon Live.